Shalom, you guys. I got a table I want to share with you. Before I do, let me stop sharing this. Before I tell you what it is, well, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of things being sent to me about the Euphrates River and it going dry and also the strange sounds being heard <clears throat> at the River Euphrates, you guys. Now, the reason why this is important is because the book of Revelation speaks about it, River Euphrates, in a couple of places. One is Revelation 9, and the other is Revelation 16. I'm sure you've seen this, right? Four angels at the River Euphrates. What about this? What about the strange noise? I'll make sure there's links to this down at the bottom, by the way. Listen to this. Kind of creepy, I know. Now, I don't know if this is legit, but it is very, very compelling. I mean, again, I'll put the link down below. Let's just get right into it, you guys. Revelation 9. On the sixth trumpet, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden archer, altar, which is before Elohim, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound at the river Euphrates. Right? That's what we're going to be looking at here in just a moment. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men and the number of the army of the horsemen, which were, which were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them, having the breastplates of fire and Jackson and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by these three was the, was the third part of men killed by fire and smoke and by brimstone. And by the way, this sounds to me like a uh, nuclear war uh, or something impacting the earth, right? And by these three was the third part of men killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power was in their mouth and in their tails, and their tails were like unto serpents. And had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold, and of silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, neither repented of their murders, nor, nor, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. Right? And let's go to 16. And see what's going on here. Um, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And these, and for they are the spirit of devils working miracles, working miracles. That's also. Um, something that's in this table, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole earth world to gather them to the battle uh, of the great day of the uh, of Elohim Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest they walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. We talked about this table, uh, this table, Armageddon, that the um, rabbi had found. And here we are again, where um, we're talking about that, right? Um, and the seventh angel poured out his vial to the air, and it came a great voice from the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, It is done. 
and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such was not since such was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great, and the city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great Babylon came into remembrance before Yahuwah, and gave unto her the cup of the wine and the fierceness of his wrath, and every every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Every stone, the weight of a talent, and then men blaspheme Elohim because of the plague of the hail, because this plague was therefore exceedingly great. So let's go over to the table. I'm going to do this with two computers. And again, this is, behold, the four angels is the access term. Here we go. All right, so here we go. This is the table, you guys. And um, I've, I work these on Shabbat. Uh, I take a break from the names codes, you guys. And so this is when I have time to do this. And uh, it's what I have here. So behold the four angels. So we have uh, behold the angels. And right next to it, in the blue there, is the word four. So it's, it's kind of... Uh, an interesting access term where the word for is to the side of it. Also have the word kukabim, which are stars, um, angels, stars, right there. Vertical in this, we have otio, which is signals or signs. And at the top, the very base of that word, ot, which is the same, we're virtually the same thing, sign. Um, the word nephilim, is right here, right next to, in, in the plain text, Nephilot Gadolot, which is great wonders, right? Remember how we read in Revelation where they were given, they were going to do signs, and anyway, it's right there. Um, Blood Moon is also in here. You see that down at the bottom? We just had that last night. Going across here in the red with the word Euphrates in the plain text, and also, again, um, these three letters also is Euphrates. And then we have the destroyer that is here as well. And I do believe that's a woe in the white right there. Let's take a look at that. Before we read the cluster of scriptures that I have at the top, I know, oh, by the way, Nibiru is also here, right? When we're seeing, we're seeing hailstones hitting the earth, the size of a talent. This is remnants of what we're going to see uh, when, when all this plays out. And by the way, Revelation is not linear. I believe it's circular. So these things are fulfilled, not necessarily in chronological or, or linear order, if that makes any sense. Um, that's kind of how I see that. The Biru is right across the top of this. So I do believe it plays a role. Um, if you guys are friends with me on Facebook, I mentioned it a couple of days ago that I think I've solved the star out of Jacob mystery, where the word Nibiru is there in the prophecy of Balaam about the end times. I think I've solved something on this that is quite interesting. And so you want to stay tuned to that when I get to that table, you guys. In Zephaniah 2, 5, I got a partial here right next to the access term that um, I think is relevant. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast. Actually, it's just woe to the inhabitants. So we got a woe here in the, in the table. Um, let's scroll up and look at the scriptures I got highlighted for you, starting with right here. This is the second chapter of Isaiah. And um, we're going to start from the beginning and um, see what it says. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahuwah's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. It shall be exalted upon the hills and all nations shall flow to it. And many people shall go and say, come. Ye, let us go to the mountain of, of Yahuwah and to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. 
For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem, and shall judge many nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hoods. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall any learn war anymore. Come ye, O house of Jacob. Come ye, oh, excuse me, O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of, of Yahuwah. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they have they be replenished from the east, and the soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of the strangers. Their land is also full of silver and gold, neither is any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land is also full of idols, and they worship the work of their hands, which their fingers have made. Remember, we read this in Revelation. And man and the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Enter the rock and hide thee in the dust, in the fear of the Lord, for the glory of his majesty and the lofty of the man shall be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Adonai alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of Yahuwah of Zavuot shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon the cedars of Lebanon, they are high and lifted up, and upon the oaks of Bashan, and upon the high mountains, and upon the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon the ships of Tarshish, and upon the pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of men, a man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the, the Adonai alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idol sh shall he utterly abolish, and, the, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, into the caves of the earth, for the fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terribly the earth. In that day, man shall cast his idols of silver and the idols of gold, which he had each had made for himself to worship, and the moles to the bats. To go into the clefts of the rocks and to the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear of Yahuwah and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth, excuse me, shake terribly the earth twice. It says it twice in this, right? Let's go to the next one very quickly. Also in Isaiah, by this time we are in chapter 19, starting with verse 1, and I will read from there. Interesting here, the burden of Egypt, behold, you would ride upon a swift cloud, he should come unto Egypt and the idols of Egypt, and shall be moved at his presence, at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the council thereof and they shall seek to their to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and the wizards and the egyptians i will i give over to the hand of the cruel lord the fierce king shall rule over them saith Yahuwah, the, the uh, uh Zavahot of host and the water shall fail from the sea and the river shall be wasted and dried up now this is really interesting because this river where these angels are bound is drying up and not only that all, most most of these uh, major river uh places in in different places of the earth excuse me like the mississippi and the euphrates and but also in other countries um you know india's having trouble um syria even well that's euphrates Many countries are having rivers that are drying up all around the world, you guys, not just here in Mesopotamia. It's all around the world. So I find that really interesting. Let's look at this next line here, which is further down in Isaiah. We're in the 34th chapter by this time. So imagine that the cylinder is such that these scriptures are wrapped around and coming to cl clustering together in this table about the four angels, and which, by the way, are released. You can see here in the white, uh, I didn't show that, by the way, I just remembered, the word released 
I could not find it bound or in chains or anything like that uh, referring to these angels, but I could find the word released. So keep that in mind. Um, I think we're in that time now. Um, let's go back and read what's in 34 before I forget and move on. So starting with, um, let's back up here. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, right? The Nephilim, the fallen, as the leaf falleth from the vine, and as the falling of the fig from the tree, right? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of Yahuwah is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and the blood of lambs and goats and the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahuwah had has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter, slaughter in the land of uh, Edum, Edumia. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks and with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood for their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of Yahuwah's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. Remember what we read in Revelation, fire and brimstone and smoke, right? It shall not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to to generation it shall lie waste none shall pass through forever and ever but the cormorant and the bittern and the bittern shall possess her and the owl and the raven shall dwell in and shall stretch upon the line of confusion the stones of emptiness and they shall call the nobles thereof to, unto the kingdom but none shall be there and her princes shall be nothing the thorns shall come up in her places, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. And the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow, and the screech owl shall also rest there and find herself a place to rest. There shall be excuse me, there shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow and shall the vultures be gathered, every one to her mate. Seek out of the book of Yahuwah and read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth hath commanded and his spirit hath gathered, hath gathered them. And he hath cast a lot for them and his hand hath divided into, unto them by line and they shall Possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. The, uh, and that's going into 35. So I found that really, really interesting. I'm sure there's much more that I can find in here, you guys. But this was something I did here on Shabbat when someone mailed, uh, emailed me, asked me about it. You guys, I'm actually working on a couple of other things about World War III, uh, Armageddon. And uh, Planet X, like I said, I, I think I've solved the um, the thing about the star of Jacob. We're going to talk about that in the next video. So please share this. I do believe it's relevant, you guys. I think it is Bible prophecy being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Be prayed up, you guys. Be calling upon his name. The time is drawing closer. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video.